Hello and uh, welcome to one more video of image analysis. Today I'm going to share with you a semi-automated uh, image analysis tool for fluorescence microscopy data from 12 well plates. Well, while it's uh, ready to analyze now 12 well plates, it will also, uh, if necessary, analyze uh, a different number of uh, well plates. But at the moment it's uh, analyzing 12 well plates. Um, it's analyzing um, general purpose uh, signal intensity from different channels, uh, binarized objects, so their size and their number, uh, also colocalization uh, between uh, two of those channels. So this video is uh, primarily aimed for the um, researching staff of the Faculty of Sport and Health Sciences, uh, University of Ilascula, Finland. And, uh, but uh, it's also, of course, open for uh, some uh, group or researcher that uh, could be interested in collaboration. Uh, for uh, If that's the case, please uh, drop us a line. Uh, so basically this tool, I'm going to drag here this basic diagram. Uh, this tool is uh, focused in these two squares in the right side here. So one first part where the data extraction of the images is uh, happening in Fiji or ImageJ and then a second part where we're actually analyzing the data and uh, and statistically uh, so in MATLAB. There is one previous part of course necessary for this to happen that we are not going to cover today and that is the acquisition or the scanning if you have a, a scanner or a microscope. In our case our system it's using a uh, LSM 700 that you see depicted here and we are using 12 well plates like I mentioned before and uh, with our automated um, uh, stage uh, we can uh, scan tile, uh, several tiles within each well and of course you can uh, have as many experiments in uh, how many wells you want there is still one square that is not in this image, of course, that um, it's totally, Im it's, to it's very important and um, without that you cannot uh, get here, but uh, it's completely out of the focus of this uh, video, which is the, the wet lab part, basically, the cell growing. In our case, we are uh, growing uh, C2, 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 C12 um, uh, cells. And, uh, but it can be, of course, uh, used with any kind of cells or you could uh, even analyze microscope slides, not necessarily any plates. So all that uh, immunohistochemistry uh, steps and uh, cell growing steps, we are, of course, not talking about that. So we are getting to the point, we are starting from the point that we have produced our uh, CZI file. Each it looks like this. So each plate in our setup, each plate with all the wells is producing a CZI file from the LSM 700. In this case, we have uh, three plates that have been scanned uh, with different uh, experiments. And uh, of course, each well also has uh, slight variations there. And uh, so we are starting from this point. So we start uh, in ImageJ, extracting the data and uh, this happens by very simply running the main script which not ready we are not ready to share it completely yet but uh, this is the over overlook of it basically it just goes through those wells it stitches it stitches all the tiles in each well together and then uh, it uh, extracts the data from there so we are um, running this and um, you have to of course then um, tell where your um, CZI files are. In our case we can go to this demo. So they are in this folder although you cannot see them here. Um, this folder is the same folder here. So it doesn't matter what, uh, what other files and, um, and uh, folders are, 
in that same folder the program is only going to run through the CZIs so you just select the folder where the CZIs are present you select them and uh, the program will run it will open some first image and the first channel of the first image and uh, it helps you uh, by telling with wh what laser it has been excited and uh, what channel what what is the name of this channel what for f uh, f future um, purposes also of knowing the variable names you should uh, insert this here in our case we actually are marking um, neutral lipids with five LD 540 you are given three choices just auto threshold it so this automatic threshold for image J you can use uh, an already built um, uh, macro for a specific uh, image for this specific channel which I have done already so this is what I'm going to use and this is what I recommend that everybody uses this is uh, for purposes of binarization so the program is going to analyze this intensity and this data that you see here but it al will also uh, threshold and binarize so to count the number of objects and uh, count um, also the measure the size of these objects you can alternatively build a new processing macro and uh, that will uh, bring you to you know figure out your own threshold for your own channel for your own purpose I recommend that you do this beforehand but uh, you can do it uh, starting from now if you want um, you can even do more complex uh, protocols as uh, deep learning uh, with this Weka tool for instance where you teach the machine to recognize different types of objects for our purposes here we are going to use this pre-built analysis uh, macro and this is the name of my variable so you click OK it will bring you to this window where you should tell where your uh, macro is I have done it beforehand here 20 XLD 540 12 well and this is selected it goes to the next channel and so on in this case is DAPI and here and in this case it's actually plain protein they're actually in different wells there are different planes so I'm just going to specify them as generally planes here and in the fourth channel we have this MF20 which is like basically a marker of uh, myotubes because we have uh, both myotubes and myoblasts in the same plate so you should find a way to differentiate them to separate the, their, their signals so this this marker is that way and then uh, additionally it will ask you if you want to perform colocalization and if so between which channels and in our case yes we want and we are mostly interested uh, in the localization between the neutral lipids and these uh, plain proteins so just click OK and then you have uh, the program is running and uh, this will take a while so it will uh, run now it will uh, get the data and uh, I'll get back to you when this is done thank you okay so the program has finished uh, going through the data and um, it has produced the processed data, the extracted data from uh, the images and we can open here the folder with the data so you can see, let's see for instance this CZI file which is equivalent to one plate produces one folder with the same name ready with the same name and uh, here is the data produced so the, the main part the most important part of the data produced is in these TSV files where we can take a look so you might be wondering if you don't remember like you see here 12 positions so these 12 positions they are um, just equivalent to the plates so each position here uh, is one uh, well I mean in the same plate and um, if we open this file here 
this first file then you have uh, 16 tiles so this is the data from 16 tiles and um, each tile so you can have an idea if we open if we open the CZI file in image J and we open only one you see there is all these tiles and each tile has uh, four channels and uh, each well is composed by 16 tiles so we are going to open only one tile of those uh, 192 in total if I, of the 12 wells if I'm not mistaken so so this is how the raw data looks so here we have the the channels and what we see here this is only from one tile so this one line contains all the data binarized and uh, grayscaled both and also co-localization um, of uh, one tile and then of course the remaining tiles the remaining 15 tiles of that same well that first well so it produces the data in this fashion and let me see if I can get okay here still it produces also uh, co-localization data and uh, it produces then uh, the stitched wells so each file here show you for instance this first one this is the first well again you see 12 numbers here 12 positions each position is one well and uh, this is uh, a stitched image a mosaic image of those 16 tiles per well and here it is So each, each well in our case is contained in this type of data. Okay, in the end, it also produces, this is only for visual and uh, display purposes, of course, and then it also produces this uh, positions file, which is very, can be very useful, this positions file, I had it open here already, which can be very useful for, um, for inspection. So here you see like each well has those uh, four by four, so 16 images. This is not uh, to proportion, by the way. Of course, the, the well is much bigger than the area of the real area that we have imaged. And um, here we have the channels separated also. In this case, we have uh, neutral lipids here and we have uh, DAPI here and um, we have this uh, one of the planes and then other planes uh, proteins these are that those MF20 the my tube marker and so on um, yes so without further ado we shall uh, look at the MATLAB part and for that uh, we just uh, run this starter file here it will bring us to MATLAB uh, to which by the way is a little bit more uh, complicated uh, than the simple script that uh, Fiji runs there is a uh, several uh, functions and files here but the main one is this and basically it just uh, goes through those uh, TSVs and uh, those uh, colocalization data and uh, it just uh, packs them together in the groups and uh, it will uh, just analyze them
but uh, there is a, f a few user interfaces uh, that the user should use to put the input so you just basically run the program and it will ask you uh, where you have your uh, your ready folder like we saw before and it's in the data here and actually here so you are brought to the folder that contains all the ready folders so it means that you can actually analyze uh, statistically at once uh, different plates and of course the different plates uh, given that they have been of course uh, sta stained and processed in the wet lab exactly in the same manner and have been scanned in the under the microscope with the same parameters of course given that these conditions are met then um, you can have them as many plates in the same folder as you want and of course each plate with all those wells each well can represent uh, uh, an experiment it can uh, represent a treatment also so you can compare many many uh, interventions and treatments uh, at, at once so you are uh, you bring the program to this folder that contains the redis you just select the folder um, it will ask you an important question which is like how many experimental groups do you have so how many experiments how many groups basically do you have many statistical groups in our case uh, uh, we have seven let's say seven you can use as many as you want like from uh, two to maybe more than ten it will be tricky at the moment you will see why because it will bring you these seven groups or how many groups you want to introduce so you can imagine if you introduce here 20 groups this will get all very tiny and small and it will be harder to operate uh, but there are ways around that if that's the case if you come up with some experiments you can uh, also solve that without uh, being too hard but for our purposes we have been analyzing something between uh, two to eight groups so this this works nicely so first you have to to name the group like um, you have seen already what uh, stains what markers we use so uh, for um, the confidentiality of our uh, of our project uh, I'm not not going to uh, describe the groups exactly as we proceeded but uh, let's make up some uh, okay so let's say that uh, these cells they uh, they were fed fat and these other cells are fed uh, some protein some other or fed carbs some other were fed uh, let's say this could be the control just water just others have been fed with uh, whiskey why not maybe and maybe these last ones they have been given drugs and this have been given ultraviolet radiation for instance and then you can so we basically just name the groups and now you have to say where in which plate you have these groups let's say that the cells or the wells that have been fed fat are all in this uh, first um, first group and we like say this is the combo this that were fed protein were also from the the first plate and let's say that they they are here and let's say the group number three that were fed with the carbs let's say they are in the second plate and let's say they have the same as the first plate so all these wells we are just clicking and identifying the wells that were treated with carbs in this case in the, and then the the one that was treated with water is in the, that plate number two, and 
let's say it's here and of course you can undo and clear the wells so the group that was treated with whiskey let's see what happened to that group let's say it's here and the group that was treated with drugs is only in this well and the group that was treated with intense ultraviolet radiation is here so you can see that uh, you have endless possibilities to say where where your groups are in which plates and then we will be able to compare all these variables so if you just click submit now it will take a uh, few seconds to produce the the results the result window that allows you to inspect um, uh, instantaneously how the those uh, plates of yours are comparing how those experimental groups are comparing and um, let's see what happened in this improvisation so it will give you a little window like this I recommend that especially if you have many groups uh, I recommend that you maximize it and you have here roughly your data and uh, you can uh, click let's start from here from this corner you can like check or uncheck the groups you want to compare you can uh, then choose which variable do you want to to look at as you see the variable names are given by those first uh, channel names you gave in image j so that's why it's important to name them correctly then uh, so here we have uh, ld540 for the neutral lipids dapi pleans then of course you have the mean median and so on this fraction number and size are uh, from the binary that fraction not fraction but bean fraction size and number are uh, binarized data and uh, the rest is uh, intensity values and you have this for the four channels LD540, DAPI, PLINS and the MF20 and then on top of this you have pretty much the same variables but normalized by the other channels this could be useful if you want to normalize it by cell number or a nuclei number or, uh, it, it can be very useful and uh, Let's just, uh, for instance, take a look at uh, at the LD540 mean normalized by the fraction of MF20. So basically, in other words, the fat content or the triacylglycerol content normalized by uh, the presence of uh, myotubes and you can uh, choose to perform this analysis uh, by wells so being a statistical case uh, each well or by tiles or uh, by plates or by cells or by particles let's uh, let's take a look by uh, tiles and then uh, you can then choose what statistics you want to do uh, you can just check the distribution or uh, perform one of the, the most common used um, statistical tests we start by checking the distribution in our case and then we can look at all the groups for now to start with you just click run of course the more groups and the more data you have here you know the less instantaneously the this will be but uh, so here you have like uh, you can uh, you have a, a normality plot where you have the theoretical Gaussian distribution in green and your red data your data here in red and this lets you tell more or less how normal your data is and you can decide from that to what tests are more uh, useful to use you can uh, remove the outliers we have two different methods I recommend that you read about them basically the first is more conservative it doesn't remove so many outliers and uh, the second one it removes quite quite everything that threatens to be an outlier and uh, you see that if you click it and then you run it 
all those outliers were eliminated. But you have to be careful with this and uh, you have to inspect your data because sometimes the outliers are, are real, you know, you know this, the, the, the theory behind it, you should understand that uh, sometimes the outli outliers are real and they are not to be eliminated, but uh, in some other cases, like I can show you here, some other cases you know obviously right away that there are some outliers. You might be unlucky and you might get one of your wells that you were basically empty or you got some part of the well that was empty of cells so of course you cannot really compare this treatment with the other ones if uh, you basically had no data so you know almost for a fact that uh, you would need to repeat this to see if you get the same result in this case most likely you actually have uh, good data in a different spot in a different part of the well so you can call this an outlier and uh, or in, in the case that you are analyzing by by uh, tiles, you can see that some tiles were not focused in the right position, like in this case here. So it's much less intense here, it's much darker here, and it's much darker there. So if you are doing some analysis by tiles, uh, you should um, definitely cut some outliers. In most cases if you analyze by well you don't need to to remove outliers. We can do that experiment. You just change your analysis by tiles and we're not going to remove anything. We're just going to run the same data and you get some tips over here what to do, what tests to do, how your t data looks and uh, what how you should proceed but uh, Behind this, you know, you should know exactly what's going on with your data. So it's really good that you inspect by uh, by hand your uh, your images, so you know what's what's the situation. So if we decide now, let's remove some outliers, but from the most conservative method. It corrects it a little bit, but it's still pretty much non-parametric. If we do correct by this more aggressive method usually get back to the normal distribution and um, and in this case with the tiles uh, this is not a bad correction to do you probably lose some data but uh, you get to the parametric uh, curve to the Gaussian curve you can use parametric tests and uh, your data doesn't change uh, usually that much so in this case you can see that the, the our wells that were fed, our cells that were fed with protein at quite the have seemed to have more fat. You know, this is just an example, it's not real data, of course, or real experiments. But you can do you can check all this uh, you can check the DAPI number, so the number of cells, the number of uh, my tubes in this case that we had that. And then you can uh, perform these tests. Let's see for instance uh, how Let's say, for instance, these two. The one that was treated with whiskey and the one that was treated with UV. They seem pretty similar, but uh, are they significantly different? Uh, we would uh, click only those and we would, uh, let's check how they look. They look pretty much parametric. Is this significant or not? I think we can uh, perform a t-test here. And you have significance between these two groups. And uh, so you can use this uh, user interface to navigate in that way and to perform your own experiments. You can go back to the same, check the distribution, and let's look at a different variable. Let's look at, uh, the, for instance, the number of this or maybe the fraction yeah the number the number of these my tubes let's see what kind of data it shows and uh, from this data it would uh, suggest that uh, the carbs and the water treatment 
would result in a better differentiation in my tubes or it would at least mean that if we compare this uh, or if you we normalize this MF20 number or MF20 signal with uh, the DAPI because the DAPI is just a general nuclei number and as you see in our data here we have all this DAPI but of course not all this DAPI uh, relates to my tubes so these are my tubes so there is much of this DAPI that is not from the my tubes and they are from the myoblasts so maybe in theory if our data is good enough we can uh, compare this uh, MF20 number let's say normalized by the DAPI fraction let's see what kind of data it shows now oh, it shows pretty much that the same so these groups would seem to be more uh, resulting in differentiation while these ones not so much uh, and so on we can like perform an ANOVA between all these groups and you get some basic data well so this is roughly how the the program works and um, this is one of the applications of course like I said before it can be used to to use uh, like uh, whatever number well plates you would be interested in but um, it's a it's a nice easy way of quantifying uh, microscopy data especially if you have like scanned if you can save time in your uh, scanning you can do it by hand of course but if you have like an automated scan scanner and then you put it in this program in uh, in no time in a matter of a couple of hours you have uh, the data it's almost almost real real time okay i hope you liked uh, i hope uh, you you find this useful and um, if you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos or uh, if you are interested in using our tool or co collaborating uh, please don't hesitate and uh, contact us that is all for now thank you next time